Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Pilot, which I think refers to Melinda May. I know, I don't think I'll ever tire of that dumb joke. So, um, yeah, spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. The, the yeah, I, yeah, love this episode. So, before I get into it, the top link in the description box will enable you to financially support the sag after Strikers, which I encourage you to do. The And then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. The, the Yeah. General thoughts. I thought it was a quite solid pilot. It does what it needs to do. And uh, yeah, you know, if I hadn't already decided I was going to watch this entire show, I think this would have gotten me very interested for it at the very least. Um, and I think, yeah, so the. Yeah, so we open on Mike saving the the doctor with the his his recently gotten superpowers and yeah, it was, you know, the the like when he just says to his kid and I also quite like the thing when, you know, we're a team, you know, at fir at first it's like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a sweet thing, but then Later, it's like, ah, oh, he's dangerous, so I don't want him near a kid, especially his own. Uh, you know, but but yeah, the, when he just says the the um, yeah, sorry, nursing a massive headache. Feel like my head was run over by a truck, so I'm a little slower today. Yeah, when he says, you know, I'm gonna see if someone needs my help. You know. I wasn't expecting him to climb the wall looking like Wonder Woman in the first solo movie. Um, I appreciate the detail that, like, the way he knows that his son is upset about something is that he's not geeking out over the the toys of the Avengers. You know, he's like, so, which one's your favorite? Mm, I don't know. I haven't really decided. Okay, there's something. I don't know what is going on. But this kid is not completely well. I, I don't know if he's sick or upset about something. I just, there's definitely something wrong. There's no way that he's that nonplussed at the, you know, but yeah. And it's, it's uh, you know, the, the, they're struggling with money. And that is something I will comment on later in this video. And the, yeah. The the ward on mission, you know, it's not enough that it's like, oh, you know, the the what's it called? Um It's not enough that that you know he's going on this mission. No no, you know, I'm five minutes away from the package, so is everybody else, you know, that's uh, yeah, okay, so he's I, I quite like the the woman in the apartment, you know. The, um, your fireplace is broken, you know, and then guys show up and he's like fighting and there's a gun and she's like, Phew. I guess it's Tuesday, you know, just completely nonplussed about this entire situation. Yeah, I, I quite like Ward, you know, talking to, to the first time he talks to, to Maria Hill and, you know, the welcome to level seven and and he even points out oh yeah i know it's cheesy just it was a dark corner i couldn't help myself i think there's a bulb out and yeah i felt like the episode did a good job explaining why this team is needed because that is obvious and and it does that nice and early too because that's one of the first things it's like i'm sorry you have the avengers and you still need a team of human beings to deal with, you know, it's like, how how does that work, you know? But yeah, it's you know basically like uh, we need we need something a little more subtle, you know. At this point, the the Avengers didn't really feel like spies. That, that came later, and 
yeah, Sky really fangirls over Mike, which, yeah, it's really no wonder that he ends up, you know, yeah, walking away without really taking her up on the offer. And, yeah, we meet Melinda May and we get the, the excellent line, have you thought about adding a moat? And... Yeah, good intro to Fitzsimmons. Also, I felt like everybody got something to do in this episode. You know, I'm hoping they're able to keep that up. That is obviously a challenge with so many characters. Um, I understand that some people apparently find... Okay, I... Sorry, I had to look up. So, Simmons is played by Elizabeth Henstridge... She's not related to Natasha Henstridge. I gotta say, that's really... I mean, I, I'm glad that she's not a Nepo baby, but it's still just, like... There's... There's definitely some resemblance. Anyway. Um, yes. So, I... You know, I'm aware that some people apparently find Fitzsimmons very, very annoying. You know, I think it's, you know, the lab geek part, which I appreciate there's two... You know, it's like, okay, so how, you know, Hollywood has this idea that if you're a genius at one thing, you're a genius at everything, you know, and the MCU itself has fallen into the, you know, there's that, oh, okay, so, you know, um, um, Bruce is an expert in gamma radiation, but also, like, what was it they said in Age of Ultron, um, some, some kind of robot-related thing, you know, that's why he's so great for Ultron project, you know, it just, like, what, how, how is, just, anyway, so I appreciate that here there's two lab geeks, and, yeah, you know, it's the kind of role, like, they're usually, not everyone is going to find them annoying, but they usually have personality, there's usually something, to, I mean, there's people who don't love Marshall Flinkman, which is just, completely absurd to me. Is that who I think? Oh, yeah. That's, you know, that is indeed Ming-Na Wen, voice of Mulan. She was Chun-Li in the 90s Street Fighter movie. She's gonna go on to play, you know, Fennec Shand. Yeah. That that is seriously awesome. I'm I I'm always down for for seeing her in something. I almost feel bad that in this she is definitely not going to be riding a bantha. Yeah, I realize not everybody's seen. There's like on Disney Plus. There's this behind the scenes of Book of Boba Fett, and she was geeking out about getting to ride a bantha. So yeah, I'm I'm really glad. It's it's very cool when an actor gets to do, and apparently, like, she grew up loving Star Wars, so it was a dream come true. And, let's see. Yeah, um, I liked, you know, Sky saying, nothing can stop, and the, the van door slides open, and they're right there. And the thing with, you know, okay, there's two ways we can do this. Is one of them the easy way? No. Oh. <laughs> like, because we expect that, you know, we expect it to be the easy way or the hard way. But no, both of them are hard, apparently. And so the, the drones are named after the seven dwarves. And, you know, he does the, the thing with, what's it called? Um, Hi-ho, it's off to work we go, kind of, you know. And, yeah, because, yeah, it's really just brand integration, isn't it? Because Disney already owned Marvel at this point. So, yeah, you know, just in case you, you know, maybe this will inspire you to go watch Snow White. That wouldn't bother the mouse at all. It was pretty funny that the truth drought was not for Sky but for Ward. <laughs> and let's see. 
Yeah, and I appreciate the subversion of expectations when, you know, Mike goes to 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 the the patient, you know, the, the woman that he saved, and it turns out she's not, like, this, you know, victim that needs, you know, I mean, she needed saving in that specific, but she's not, like, this victim fawn, she's not, like, fawning over him, she's actually the doctor who did the thing, you know, and it's, like, it shouldn't be a surprise when a woman turns out to be a doctor, you know, but they do add the element that oh, but she needed savings. You know, you're not. We're not really used to people need who need saving, being like, yeah, really, really strong in other in other ways. Not not if we meet them as, you know, someone who needed saving. And yeah, so apparently. This is a mix of the Super Soldier Serum and Extremis, if I understood that right. He definitely has Extremis, because he almost blows up near the end. Is that... I mean, I guess hypothetically possible? I don't know. I do like seeing Extremis again. I, I am aware that a lot of people despise Iron Man 3. I am quite fond of it. And <laughs> this is nonsense. Why are you making nonsense? Best line of the episode. And yeah, so Sky, you know, transmits the coordinates, and then you know, to to get away from Mike, starts a fight with these like gang-looking, which yeah, very very stereotypically like. Yeah, not not really a fan of the racial stereotyping there. Um, but yeah, you know, I thought that the, you know, the exploration of class struggle, you know, from start to finish, Mike is struggling to make ends meet. There, you know, he was fired for his his back pain and then, you know, a doctor prescribed him you know, in real life, it would be painkillers, and he'd end up addicted to to that. But in but here, it was extremis, and you know, now he's super strong. So in in both cases, you know, the fact that capitalism tried to crush him for a little bit of human weakness, you know, led to a bad result. And I wish that I believed that. You know, the MCU and Disney, you know, if they practiced what they preached, it would be a lot more. I'm, I'm glad they're preaching the right message, but I wish they would practice what they preach. Let's see. Um, yeah, and, and I, I gotta admit, I did think that Ward had decided to, to kill Mike, but no, it's revealed, you know, Fitzsimmons did get the the night um, working so he was able to you know save everyone including mike answering the question how do you stop an exploding man and we see that lola can fly and yeah um so some general thoughts, uh, some some more general thoughts. I, you know, it's not really new to to open a, a show that's about like spy stuff with a new recruit who then has to have stuff explained to them and and such. But I did think they handled it pretty well. Um, I'm invested in every major character. If, yeah, I, I appreciate it, you know, I I understand that later on it won't tie into the movies. You know, so let's see, if I understand correctly, basically later there will be, like, the yeah, the show tries to set itself in the same world as the movies, but the movies never really try to, the, the movies don't reference stuff from the, the show. 
but you know, yeah, I, I appreciate you know Phil and Maria Hill being here and the 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 drawing is, is that a poop with knives? It's a porcupine. Um, let's see. Yeah, I felt like I got um, an impression of who everyone on the team was and why they don't really want... Did anybody on the team at all want to be on the team? I guess maybe Fitzsimmons. Other than that, nobody on the team actually wants to be on the team. But, yeah. Taking a page out of the Netflix Marvel book by making everyone a reluctant hero. Um, I thought that it worked this thing of, you know, this is, so this is the aftermath of the Battle of New York, and Extremis is now, like, being used by, you know, in, in, in Iron Man 3, it was only in the hands of the, uh, the AIM people, but now the, I guess, did someone... Yeah, it's it's perfectly credible that it would end up elsewhere as well, and yeah, you know the, the I I don't know if the the rest of the show is going to do this as well, but certainly this episode, like the the Avengers would not really have been that like beneficial in in the like you know. Um, not sure Tony has anything in his suit that can, like, just knock you out without, like, hurting you pretty badly. Uh, yeah, Thor and Hulk are definitely not going to be able to... You know, if Captain America tried to throw his shield at Mike near the end of this episode, Mike would probably just catch it or, like, smack it away or something, you know, equally strong. Yeah, um... I appreciate that the, you know, Mike is the antagonist, but he's not really a villain as such. You know, I, I, I like a sympathetic antagonist. I think that might be everything that I have to say. Um... I don't think I'm going to talk too much in these videos about Joss Whedon being problematic. One thing I will say, um, I did think it was the, the fact that, like, several of the, the women in this episode were, like, in some way sexualized. Like, you know, at least Sky some of the time she chose to do it, you know, but the, you know, Sky is talking to, to Mike and says, you know, and implies that if Mike saw the, the, the woman that he, that he saved, she would, like, perform some sexual favor, which, like, there's nothing wrong with, with sex, but it's just really messed up this, like, you're you're really not doing anything to like subvert or underline the the power dynamic you're just playing into it you know there's a lot of it's a it's a thing in comic books with a superhero saving someone and the person they save either becoming or being their already being their love interest and it just you know it it's Romantic relationships, relationships in general, should have equal power dynamics whenever possible. Um, yeah, there's several references to the idea of Sky being like a groupie, and apparently, you know, she says it was one time, so apparently she did, and with Tony, so, you know, continuing the streak of misogyny that we see in Iron Man 1 and 2. And three. Um, let's see. I feel like there was at least one more. 
Right, and the yeah, the the you know when when Ward is in the apartment, it's you know it's this beautiful woman, and you know. Let's see. I forget. Is she like in a towel when we first see her or something? You know, it's yeah. It's a yeah. I think that is so. You know, I I hope that they don't that that's not like an ongoing theme for the rest of the show. Um, when Sky like after Ward has been given the truth serum. You know, he lets slip that he thinks the sky is beautiful, and then she, like, takes her coat off. I mean, he's already on truth serum. It's not gonna... I guess she's just, like, messing with him, just trying to make him more uncomfortable, because it's not... She doesn't need to do anything in order to get him to tell the truth. Yeah. Which, you know, th that is, like, that is essentially, like, payback. You know, he's standing there trying to intimidate her, now the tables have turned, so that that one does not bug me as much, though I wish that it wasn't, you know, this kind of thing. You know, I, I know Joss Whedon and women using weapon, we sexuality as a weapon is a thing. Um, I think, you know, with that said, I do want to underline, you know, the the beautiful woman in the apartment is not made out to appear weak and sky is not like not everything about her is sexual she is clearly also really really capable an excellent hacker and it is not all of the the women you know melinda may um maria hill and ultimately also the the doctor that was saved by, you know, there's no, there's nothing, you know, sexual about them. Right, Debbie is her name. Debbie is the Debbie Doctor. It was a bit of a downer at times. Debbie Downer Doctor. Dr. Debbie Downer. She did not go to evil medical school for four years just to be called, just to, for people to not call her doctor. That is it for this one. So, yeah, you know, I am like, you know, overall, I do love the episode. Really excited to see more. And, yeah, um, it's probably going to be about one episode per day, every day. Um, and let's see, I think it's, let's see, I think it was after, yeah, for the first two seasons, then I'm going to do... Agent, one, the first season of Agent Carter, then back to this, and, you know, I'm doing them in the order that they were originally, like, released. So, yeah. Um, right, uh, there was one more thing, you know, so basically the show, this episode works hard to try to say, you know, yes, there are bad guys, you know, Mike is right about that, but the the you know ultimately his the the foreman is abiding by rules set from above and shield the corporation are not the man you know pushing pushing down and robbing the regular people like mike you know and I think it was necessary to do. I don't think it's completely credible. Um, the MCU is much, much too in favor of the status quo for someone as left-leaning as myself. Um, and and the you know, which by itself, you know, I'm I'm fine with the fact that there are, you know, I, I the fact that there are franchises that are entirely conservative like Die Hard and Rambo and such you know most of the Predator franchise that by itself doesn't really bother me it's you know I, I try to criticize the ideas but I'm not saying that like those franchises just shouldn't exist or something but the MCU does try to somewhat appeal to 
the left. And that's, you know, the fact that it doesn't go as far, you know, it's it's trying to, it's, it's frustratingly centrist, which, yeah. Um, but it is, you know, it's the kind of thing... When this show first premiered, they knew that they they couldn't just play it completely straight, but they also, like, you know, ultimately they wanted a show where S.H.I.E.L.D. are the good guys, so what do you do? You kind of just have to, you know, position them as the, the good guys, you know, and, and obviously, you know, a a situation where a black person is being confronted by the law and it ends with you know Melinda May specifically takes out the the shotgun wielding guy who shoots uh, Mike you know and Ward only takes the shot once he has something in his hands that is not going to kill Mike you know so that's yeah that's a that's a pretty clear way to message that they are the good guys, you know. Yeah, I think I have said everything that I had about this episode. So, yeah. Um, excited to see where it goes. Um, yeah. Never tell me it's impossible. <laughs>